We're going to be palpating the final muscle of the adductor group, and that is going to be adductor magnus. So as you can see, we've changed position to a sideline position. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that, which I'm going to explain. But for now, you're placing the person with sideline. The top leg is going up, bent out of the way, and we are going to be palpating the bottom leg that's on the table. Uh, two reasons why I like this. First of all, the adductor magnus is next to the hamstrings, so it makes it easier for you to orient where the semimembranosus and tendinosus is, plus it gets some of the other adductors, which are flexors, out of the way. And magnus is the only extensor of the group, um, so it does extension and adduction as two of its big actions. And then another reason that if you are working with a male body, the genitalia typically kind of goes forward and out of your way, um, so it makes it so that you're a little bit easier to palpate without them needing to border from this position. So I am going to use this sideline position for a palp. There is two heads and therefore two kind of separate origins. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of follow up the hamstrings. This is at the bottom of the gluteals. I'm going to sink in and look for what is known as the ischial tuberosity. To confirm that I'm on the ischial tuberosity, I'm just going to reach down and ask her to bend her knee up towards me a little bit. Good. And relax. So you can utilize the hamstring's main function of knee flexion to help you find that ischial tuberosity, which I am on. So this is the origin of the posterior head. And then from there, I'm gonna be moving anterior. So you're gonna again ask for consent before moving towards the groin. You're going to follow up, sink down in to the musculature, and then up into the ramus. So this is the ischial ramus that I'm currently on, just anterior to the ischial tuberosity. And at this point, I'm gonna ask her to slowly but gently lift her leg up off the table into an adduction. Good, and back down. I'm gonna move a little bit more anterior. There often is a fold. I'm gonna just pull on her shorts just a little bit here. So right at the bottom of that glute fold, this is a great location for you to kind of sink in. And we're gonna move up along this ischiopubic ramus. So the ramus of the ischium, just anterior to the ischial tuberosity. And as you work your way a little bit more anterior, you're gonna then get onto the inferior pubic ramus. The two of them together would be called the ischiopubic ramus. So I'm along that anterior belly's origin. I'm gonna again ask her just to lift her leg up. Great. And I'm feeling quite a bit of a lift from on top of that landmark. So here's our origin straight along this area. And now we're gonna start getting into the insertions. For the insertion of where the muscle belly is, I'd like to find where the most medial hamstring, which is semimembranosus. So again, I'm gonna take advantage of the hamstring by asking her to push into me here. Good, and now I can identify this semimembranosus and tendinosus and relax and bring the leg back down. So I found that border and I know that magnus is gonna be just anterior to semimembranosus. I'm gonna sink down, taking my time. Again, this can be very tender for people. Once you're down as far as you can, gently ask them to start lifting their leg up towards the ceiling, and as they do that, you're gonna feel a lot of lift. Make sure that it's not them just trying to bend their knee, but they're actually trying to lift their whole leg straight up off the table. Okay, let's try that one more time. Lifting the leg up, great, and back down, and I can sink in. Deep in this area is gonna be the first attachment for the insertion known as the gluteal tuberosity. It's then going to be running down all the way along the linea aspera, that deep posterior landmark of the femur. And then towards the bottom, it's gonna stop. So we have one insertion running all the way along here, and then we have a space, and this is known as the adductor or adductor hiatus. And that's gonna be where it does not make contact some textbooks will reference that it finishes on this medial supracondylar ridge. And then again, our hiatus and a gap. And then I'm gonna finish on what is known as the adductor tubercle. So I'm finding the condyle and the epicondyle of the femur. I'm gonna follow that up. 
and I'm gonna roll off the top a little bit more posterior than anterior and sink in a little bit. And you will feel a bit of a taut band from this magnus tendon. Again, very gently if you start to lift your leg up for me, great, and right in this area, I can feel this taut band attached onto this adductor tubercle. So that's the insertion of the posterior belly in this here. So we had two origins, ischio pubic ramus and ischial tuberosity, and then you have several insertions, gluteal tuberosity, linea asper, supracondylar ridge, the hiatus gap, and then the adductor tubercle as the final attachment. Because this muscle is very large in one of your main AD ductors, it is going to be able to both do flexion and extension at the acetabular femoral joint. Uh, more anterior fibers pulling it forward, and again, more of these posterior fibers pulling it back. It obviously does a lot of adduction in its name, adductor magnus, and then depending on which fibers are acting, it can might rotate again forward or back, internal or external. And that's going to conclude our palpation of adductor magnus.